One of the things that I'm interested in is understanding um, the nature of perception. When we're engaged in any particular task, we like to think that what it is we're looking at is a stable entity, right? We get a sense that right now I'm looking at you and the, the, I feel as though nothing is changing. Um, and that's a good thing. Right? We, we want to have a perception of, of our environment that's stable. Um, what's neat about that, though, is the underlying neural response is constantly changing. So your stability of perception rides on a dynamic temporal evolution of neural coding. I started this project um, just to get a, a general idea of whether or not it can actually go in and take a, a, a large um, EEG signal on the scalp and break it down into fundamental components that map onto what we know, how specific neural populations are, are activated. So I was able to map those responses to particular regions of space that a person is looking at. And that's when Isabel and Tori got involved in that, is that, that particular mapping structure. When you see a scene in front of you, when you see the world in front of you, your brain is obviously processing that information and it has to condense and get meaning from whatever you're seeing. Basically, we're trying to understand how, depending on what you're trying to do in any given moment, might change how the information is condensed and processed. Doing this type of research is extremely important, especially for those who have deficiencies in their visual system. The more that we understand about the visual system, the more that we're able to like apply it and help people that have these deficiencies. So a lot of my work is um, done primarily with EEG. EEG stands for electroencephalogram. Very long word. <laughs> yeah. That's a neural measure that records um, large population neural responses from the scalp, so it's a non-invasive technique. Participants come into the EEG lab in Olin and we connect uh, EEG nuts to their heads, which are, they look like little, kind of like sci-fi movie <laughs> caps on your head. <laughs> and we have them look at different images and we ask them to either to do different things in the image to have a different goal going into looking at the scene and then while that's happening we record their brain waves um, and then through a lot of processing of the data we can get actual responses and see what brain activity was happening automatically without you even being necessarily consciously aware of those things. Obviously our project combines a lot of math, a lot of computer science, a lot of neuroscience and it's interesting to see these different topics come together like this. And this one of the, the, the beautiful things about Colgate is the support for research. The student engagement, students are really awesome. They want to engage in the research. And you know, this isn't just kind of a professor-student relationship. It's about breaking down that barrier. And the best way that I've found to make that work is to treat it as a true collaboration. Say, we are working together on this. I'm no longer your professor, I'm your collaborator. Early at Colgate, never would have thought that I'd be part of such a big and cool project. And Professor Hansen has been incredible at like encouraging the support in it, our interests. So that's been really great. I didn't even know going into Colgate that this was a route that I could take. And it's definitely something that's becoming more popular. And I'm so excited for like the generations down the line and what they contribute to this project.